This is a vector problem that we do in Calculus 3 here, so let's see what's going on. Three people are trying to hold a ferocious lion still for the veterinarian. The lion in the center is wearing a collar with three ropes attached to it, and each person has a hold of a rope. Charlie is pulling in the direction of 62 degrees west of north with a force of 175 newtons. Sam is pulling in the direction of 43 degrees east of north with a force of 200 newtons. What is the direction and magnitude of the force which must be exerted by Alice on the third rope to counterbalance Sam and Charlie? So now, <clears throat> there's a lot of words there. So let's draw a picture and set a problem based on what we understand of forces. All right, so this is north and south axis. This is east and west axis. There's where the lion sits. So Charlie's pulling in the direction of 62 degrees west of north at a force of 175 newtons. So if I draw him, this angle is 62 degrees, 175 newtons. When I do, oh, and I'm gonna call it vector C for Charlie. And the Sam is 43 degrees east of north. So 43 degrees east of north at 200 newtons. All right. Always organizing it makes it better. There they are. Now I know that Alice is going to be somewhere down here pulling in the opposite direction, whether in quadrant four or three, I'm not sure. But what I do know is that if I take Charlie's vector plus Sam's vector plus Alice's vector, I should get zero displacement. That's the key. So the sum of the vectors should equal zero. So we'll just make Alice's a, a generic vector and we'll solve for it algebraically. So from here on out, it's trig and algebra. Now, um, normally we use sine and cosine to define the, the i and j components of these guys. But if we want to do the the way we did it in class, uh, we always use the, vec the angle that's to the horizontal. It just works better. So this guy is 47 degrees because the sum of 43 and 47 is 90. And this is 28 degrees because the sum is 62 and 28 are also 90. So when you define a vector, make sure that you always work with the vector or the angle that's compared to the horizontal axis, not the vertical axis. It's just, again, it makes it more consistent, the process here. So I'm going to have 175 cosine of 28 degrees and then 175 sine of 28 degrees for Charlie. Now I'm in the second quadrant so that means that the I component needs to be negative. If you use the full rotation from here to here then you don't have to worry about the negative and positive but I'm just going to work with acute angles here. So S is going to be 200 cosine of 47 degrees 200 sine of 47 degrees. And since I'm in quadrant one, both components I and J will be positive. Now I'm just going to say that Alice is just the vector um, A, B. Those are the components for Alice. So now comes the more algebra. I know that this is true. So let's put everything in its place down here and then just compare components. So I have minus 175 cosine of 28 degrees, comma 175 sine of 28 degrees for Charlie. I have to add to that 200 cosine of 47 degrees, 200 sine of 47 degrees for Sam. And then I got Alice's vector here, A, B, and again, that sum should be zero. So I know if I take all the I components, that sum should be zero, and all the J components, that sum should be zero. So let's separate those out. So I've got minus 175 cosine of 28, that's the I component here, plus 200 cosine of 47 degrees, the I component here, plus A, should be zero. And the J components work the same. 175 sine of 28 degrees plus 200 sine of 47 degrees 
plus b equals zero. And now what I have is one equation here to solve for a and two equations here to solve for a. So if I solve for a here, that means I'm going to subtract or move those to the other side. So add this, subtract that. So the i component for Alice is 175 cosine of 28 degrees minus 200 cosine of 47 degrees. For uh, the j component, that means b. So I'm going to subtract both of those from both sides. Minus 175 sine of 28 degrees minus 200 sine of 47 degrees. So let's just see what these turn out to be using the calculator. Again, this is all just a bunch of algebra and trigonometry and I try not to put approximations in until the very last minute. So let's see where we're going. We got uh, 175. Oh, make sure your mode's in degree mode. Make it a little faster. 175 cosine of 28 degrees minus 200 cosine of 47 degrees. And that's going to be the I component for Alice. So 18.1162, 18.1162. And then the other component, I'm just going to do second entry so I can just change it. So I got to put a negative sign here, 175 sine of 28 degrees minus 200 sine of 47. So I'm getting minus 228.4283. Minus 228.4283. Now those are the components for Alice's vector. So that means that Alice's vector should be equal to 18.1162 comma minus 228.4283. Now, does that make sense? Well, that puts this in quadrant four, which was one of the part that makes sense. I'm not moving very far out on the horizontal axis, but I'm moving really low down on the Y axis or vertical axis, but that also makes sense. So here I move a tiny bit down here, move way down here. That makes sense that the vector would be this direction to keep the line still. That makes sense. Okay. So now we have to find the magnitude of A and the direction that it's going in. So the magnitude of A is the square root of 18.1162 squared plus 228.4283 squared. I should use my parentheses here and let's get an approximate value. So second square root <coughs> one eight point one one six two squared plus two twenty eight point four two eight three squared and if some of you are worried why I didn't put the negative in there well if I put a negative or positive it's going to be the same number because I'm squaring it this extra parenthesis closes the original parenthesis that gives me two twenty nine point one four five five. Did I do that right? Two twenty eight point four two eight three. One one six two two twenty eight point four two eight two twenty nine point one four five five. Okay. So the magnitude here is two twenty nine point one four five five newtons. All right, I had to check to make sure I had that number right. So yes, that's correct. Now we have to find the angle uh, that that particular vector makes with the horizontal or with the vertical, doesn't really matter. If I draw a little picture here again, here's the lion, here is the south and here's east, east and south. And this vector is coming down really close like this. So we can either find this angle theta or this angle alpha, it doesn't matter. Um, it just doesn't. So if I do the bigger angle, just because it's just bigger, 
I'm going to make this triangle is going to be kind of funky. I'm going to make a right triangle. This length is 18.1162 and this length is 228.4283. Now I want that angle right there. Yes, I know this is negative, but again, I'm trying to just find that acute angle so I don't have to worry about signs, even though I'm in quadrant four. So let's see, I know that the tangent of that angle is going to be opposite over adjacent. So tangent of the theta that I want is 228.4283 divided by 18.1162. So theta is equal to the arctan of 228.4283 divided by 18.1162. So let's get our machines, tangent inverse, 228.4283 divided by 18.1162. I'm in degree mode, so that should give me 85.4655 degrees. So that's what this angle is. So that's going to be 85.4655 degrees south of east. If you found alpha, alpha would turn out to be 85.4655 minus 90. So 4.5345 degrees, 4.5345 degrees east of south. So either one of these is would be acceptable for this problem because it doesn't say if you're supposed to go from the vertical or horizontal and finding position. So either one of those would be fine. 